Okay, welcome everyone. Today I am going to be talking about metabolomics. My name is Belinda. I am a PhD student finishing up my second year in the Gram Lab of Chemical Engineering. And so I'll just go ahead and get started. So what is metabolomics? Basically, it's the study of metabolism. So as you see on the right there, it's this huge chemical reaction network and it coordinates the co conversion of nutrients. So it's really important because it generates energy and molecules that are required for all sorts of biological functions. So since it's really important, um, this means that if you have a dysregulated metabolism, it can contribute to many diseases like cancer, diabetes, and others. So to give you guys an example, I'm gonna talk about breast cancer today because that's what my project is on. And so, um, the thing about breast cancer is the leading cause of death in women around the world. So there's a lot of people struggling with this disease or that know someone who does. And unfortunately, only 20 to 25 percent of patients are eligible for targeted therapies with breast cancer. So to begin thinking about um, you know, developing therapeutics for breast cancer, you first need to understand the disease. So here I'm going to talk about um, breast cancer progression. So if you look at the anatomy of the breast, it's composed of milk ducts. Um, and at the end of the ducts, um, there are these luminal epithelial cells and if um, they become malignant or cancerous, they can begin to have unregulated growth. And as it progresses, it could even spread to other areas of the body. Um, so how does cancer support this growth? Well, it's by a reprogrammed metabolism. So I'm going to get into that now. So here we're looking at a basic diagram of metabolism in the cell. And so basically glucose or sugar is brought into the cell and then processed for energy. Um, and so the idea of a targeted therapy is to target one of the steps in metabolism and potentially hinder the downstream outcomes of the pathway. And so this is really attractive um, because these target therapies would have the potential to be effective with minimal effects on other or normal tissues that don't rely on metabolism as much or the same way as cancer. So when we're um, trying to develop a targeted therapy, you need to have something to target. So in breast cancer, we're studying glycolysis. Um, and this is because of this data presented here. What you'll notice um, is that, sorry, I got distracted by Zoom. Um, what you'll notice is that looking at all these cell lines, these breast cell lines, they have very drastically different rates of consuming glucose. So on the x-axis, we have their glucose or sugar uptake, and it's on all, um, it's all over the spectrum. Um, and on the y-axis, we have the time for the population to double or basically the growth rate. And what you'll notice is these dots are kind of like randomly scattered. So the varying 
uh, glucose uptake is not correlated with the growth rate. It's unrelated. So this is interesting to us. And oops, um, these differential glycolytic rates across breast cancer cell lines has attracted attention to look at glycolysis for potential therapeutic targets. So basically, um, we're looking at the pathway of glycolysis for potential therapeutic targets for breast cancer. So how we are studying breast cancer cell metabolism is we're doing labeled metabolomics. So what that means is first we treat the cells with the label. So by label, I mean isotope label, um, the heavy 13 carbon glucose, we can feed the cells and then it's processed um, through the pathway of glycolysis shown here. And then it's uh, producing pyruvate, um, which represents a fork in the road where it can either go to the TCA cycle and the mitochondria, or it can continue to go through glycolysis to output lactate, so labeled lactate. And so at this point, we want to collect these metabolites. And so that's called extraction. Um, I'll go into that more on the next slide. So we extract the metabolites and then we can quantify them using LCMS. And I'll discuss that as well. So the extraction step, um, basically to collect the metabolites in the cell, the first step is to stop the cell metabolism. So we can capture um, what it's really like. And so to do that, we wash the cells with cold ammonium acetate that has neutral pH. So the reason we're doing that is when you're washing the cells in a cold environment, um, this um, stops the enzymes in metabolism from working because they cannot work at that temperature. And then once we have the metabolites as they are, we can extract them using methanol. So we use 8% methanol, that's very, very cold, minus 80 C, um, and we incubate the cells at this temperature for at least 20 minutes. So we would do that in a low temperature freezer um, that's pictured on the top right. So after that incubation period, the cells will actually be mostly suspended in that methanol mixture. And um, we can collect them using a cell scraper. Um, you see that on the middle right. So once we have the cells in the liquid in a tube, we can spin them down using a centrifuge. And that will create separation for us. So the cell membrane and stuff like that that's non-polar will go to the bottom. As you see on the left, it creates this separation and we have a upper aqueous layer where we have the metabolites in the polar phase of the methanol. Um, so at that point, we can collect that top liquid called the supernatant, and it has the metabolites. Um, and at that point, to separate the metabolites from the methanol, we can evaporate away the methanol uh, solvent um, using what's called a speed back. So that's pictured on the bottom right, and um, it's called a speed vac because it has a vacuum. And that vacuum will lower the pressure enough that the boiling point 
of our solvent will lower as well and it will actually boil or evaporate off the methanol leaving just the metabolites behind um, without using any heat that might damage them. Okay, so we've done the treatment, we've done the extraction, we have our metabolites and we're ready to quantify them. So that's the next step. So that is done with liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry, what I call LCMS. And so the first step is the HPLC you see on the left. Um, basically, the liquid chromatography um, runs the samples through a nonpolar column and it helps to separate the metabolites based on their hydrophobicity or polarity. And at that point, it feeds it to the mass spectrometer. And so the mass spectrometer or MS is um, where the samples are ionized and um, it uses an electric field um, to separate the compounds by their mass over charge ratio and detect their relative abundances. So this is really powerful technology um, that makes all of this possible. Um, it's used in a lot of areas of research. Um, so I recommend learning more about it and definitely join us on Wednesday to hear about HPLC more. Okay, so what does this data look like when we're all done? Well, this is my data as an example. So I was looking at two breast cancer cell lines, M436, low glycolytic, and M453, high glycolytic. And I was looking to see how their uh, glycolytic rate is affected by the availability of the nutrient pyruvate. And so one takeaway I noticed is that M453 actually has a higher glycolytic rate without pyruvate available. But on the other hand, the other cell line M436 um, its glycolytic rate is not changed by the availability of pyruvate. But overall, with or without pyruvate available, M453 has almost twice the glycolytic rate of M436 at 10 minutes. So um, really all I want you to take away from this slide is that metabolism is changing over time with different nutrients available and um, it's different for different cell lines. I mean, if you're studying the same type of cancer, you know, you can get different results. It really depends on all of these factors. So what are we gonna do with this data? Well, um, since we've done our labeled metabolomics, we have our metabolite labeling states, and I'm going to be doing what's called metabolic control analysis. And so basically, I'm going to play with the enzyme expression levels in glycolysis to calculate what's called flux control coefficients that tell us. Um, how much regulatory contribution each enzyme has on the pathway. And then whichever enzymes have the highest flux control or our regulatory nodes, we'll pursue them as potential therapeutic targets. So, you know, we're studying metabolism, but this can have, um, you know, this can give us insight on potential therapeutic directions for a cancer. And that's, you know, the power of 
studying metabolism. So overall, big picture, um, we're using metabolomics to study how metabolism differs between two different breast cancer cell lines and seeing how their metabolism can change with different nutrients available. And um, the most important thing here is it's helping us build a systematic quantitative rationale to pursue potential therapeutic targets. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank my lab for their help with my project um, and um, thank my um, funding sources as well for making it possible um, and opening it up for questions. Um, I know I went fast, so any and all questions. I have a question. So um, what I wanted to ask, to what extent has this research, has this research um, contributed to like medicine? Like how has it actually been applied? Right. Um, that's a good question. So applying it to medicine, it's, there's, for my research, it's not direct because I'm studying the cell lines metabolism. Um, so I'm kind of doing like proof of concept, showing how we can identify vulnerabilities in metabolism. Um, but looking forward, you know, um, I could continue the, these same methods, but later I would move forward to either studying with a 3D model or um, using an animal model. And um, if, you know, through all of that, I did find a vulnerability and a way to target it for therapeutic benefit, then eventually it would um, make its way to a clinical trial in humans. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions maybe about um, the extraction process or sample prep. I don't have any, but I just wanted to thank you for uh, taking your time to present for us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Awesome. So I think that's it for today. Um, everyone, I think there's another session on, on Wednesday. So if you tune in, you'll hear more about HPLC as well. So thank you, Belinda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>